This episode of Congratulations is brought to you by Cash App. As you know, Cash App is the simplest way to send and save money, and now it's the simplest way to try and grow your money with Cash App Investing. Uh, This is a true story, but one fire locked himself out of his house and paid the locksmith with with Cash App. $300 just like that. No dunce. You know, it's, uh, yeah, that's a good thing because he left his wallet inside, but he still had his phone on him. Uh, So it's great. Use Cash App to invest in any stock for as little as $1. Y'all want to invest? Cash App brokerage services are provided by Cash App Investing, a subsidiary of Square and member SIPC. And as always, when you sign up for Cash App and use the promo code congrats, not only will you instantly receive $10, but Cash App will also now donate $10 to the Trevor Project, an amazing organization that provides crisis intervention and suicide prevention services to LGBTQ across America. Uh... Uh, download Cash App from the App Store or Google Play Store today. Crazy, 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 Episode 157, dude. And you know what? Uh, um, my elbow feels tight. Yeah, dude. My elbow feels tight. My back was hurting, and it started to get. I started to get used to it. Now I'm at the age of my babies where it's fine. I'm at the age of my babies where my back is okay. I, I, I'm at the age of my babies where I just. I'm not gonna get better. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna get used to the pain, and that's how my back is, and it's all good. Finally, was getting used to my back, and then my. Sh- my elbow tightened up. Yes, dude. I have tennis elbow and I don't even play tennis. Yes. I love that, dude. I love that for me. I love that for me, dude. But anyway, it's episode 157 and I'm cool, dude. Uh, it's episode 157 and um, and uh, we did. I was in Irvine last week. Uh, for uh, shows, working out some new material. I've got like 30 minutes of new material from the uh, the um, Follow the Leader tour. Is it popping yet, my baby? Some of it's popping. Some of it needs work. Some of it needs to be thrown out. Some of it are little gr- grains of, 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 of something that it might work into a bigger bit and a larger fucking thing. But we'll see. Who knows? Got some bits on uh, different things, so come on out. I'm going to be in Pasadena, California, February. That's all sold out. Uh, cock. Uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, March 20th, March 21st. Robinsonville, Mississippi, for some reason. Horseshoe Casino and, ho- and, and Hotel. Ronert Park, California, April 10th. Where is it? Las Vegas, I got two, April 17th and April 18th. Uh, Brea, California, April 30th through May 3rd. And then again, I'm going back May 7th to May 10th to Brea, California. Because let me tell you something, dude. They love your boy over in wherever the fuck Brea is. Orange County, is it? And then I'm going to go back to Las Vegas, Nevada, because can't get enough of your boy. Um, Wow. Think about for real people who call themselves your boy and and with with like and mean it. Yo, what's up? It's your boy. It's your boy T Pain. It's your boy Da Baby. How about how Lil Baby was kind of popping and then Da Baby came up and now Lil Baby's like, oh man, maybe I should just be the toddler. How can you have two babies in rap? So many Lils, so many babies. There's also Baby, isn't there? Wasn't that the fucking guy? Who was the guy with the teardrop? That was with Lil Wayne. Baby, right? <laughs> I'm drinking hot tea, bitch. <laughs> that part. Uh, the air's on, and I'm not going to be sweating, and it's all good, but I got that fucking sneak chain on, dude. If you're watching, I have a sneak chain, but I'm wearing it on the inside, just to let you know that under it all, I'm still a little bit DMX. Um, Dude, I uh, I don't really know where to start this podcast, to be honest, It's because uh, yesterday was the day... That um, I don't want to start with on too much of a down downer, but like fucking, I found out you know Kobe Bryant died like uh, at noon yesterday, 
when I was waking up bright and early at noon. And um, I just couldn't believe it, man. Um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It's so fucking weird that he died and the way he did. I, I got to say, first of all, I cried like all day, which I'm not trying to make it about me, but it's so fucking weird that I cried all day because I, I didn't really, I don't care about basketball. I don't, uh, I don't know much about Kobe except for, you know, he, um, you know, he played basketball. He's one of the greatest of all time. And, uh, and I just don't, I don't know if I, uh, I didn't know I cared that much. And then when I found that out about how he's 41 in a helicopter crash, I don't, I also like, I never witnessed somebody, uh, hey, turn the air off. It's bugging me. I never noticed about, um, I never noticed how m- much, like there was so, in my life, somebody dying like prematurely or like even the Robin Williams thing or the uh, Michael Jackson. I was 29 when Michael Jackson died and Robin Williams, when he died, it was like six years ago. And Robin Williams was in like in my circle, in my life. Like, like we talked about him all the time. I'm a comedian. He was a comedian. Um, I met Robin Williams once and talked with him for a little bit and just, um, that was rough. But for some reason, the Kobe Bryant thing really fucking hit me hard. Like, I mean, maybe it's cause we're the same age. Maybe it's cause I'm going to be a dad or some shit. And his daughter was in the helicopter and it just really fucked me. It fucked me up the whole day. And I had a show in Irvine and I wasn't sure if. I was going to be able to do it the way I do. I mean, I knew I'd be able to go on stage and, you know, I'm a professional. I'll be able to get on stage and do this shit. But I wasn't sure if I was going to, you know, give, be able to do it 100%. Now, you know, I was able to. I got on stage and it was all good. It was fine, which I don't know. Maybe it, But I, I just, like, was crying four, I, four or five times. I just, like, people would send me videos of what of, of him and... Then an hour before showtime, I was like, all right, you guys, you got to stop, man. I, I can't. I'm, I'm going to be like fucking upset on stage. I just didn't know. I'm surprised how big of a fucking deal he was to the world. Like there's nobody who didn't know who Kobe Bryant was. Everybody knows who Kobe Bryant is. And if you're fucking seven years old, you know who Kobe Bryant is. And he only retired like three years ago, which I didn't even realize. Three, four years ago. It's still fun. It kind of felt like he played basketball in a way. And then the thing the other night, like the, the 10 hours before LeBron passed him in, in scoring or whatever it was, and, and then Kobe was in the news the night before and then in the news for, for being celebrated and then in the news for being so, such a, in such a tragedy. It was just so fucking awful, man. I just, my heart goes out to his family and, and any, I mean, dude, I was watching some of the clips, like people were just talking about how like he put L.A., he made L.A. cool again. He made L.A. It's just, I don't realize like, you know, I make fun of my opener a lot because he likes sports and he's fucking 35 and like he doesn't, he's a comedian. I'm like, bro, just hang it up, you know, like stop shooting a basketball at the YMCA. You're fucking 35. Have a child. You know what I mean? Work on your jokes. The guy's so competitive. It's like, he's like, you don't think I can fucking jump further than you? I'm like, bro, I don't give a fuck. I'm 39. You know, if you're not getting paid to do anything with a ball, give it up when you're 24. But my, my opener is just like, let's go, let's go, let's fucking play. You don't think I could do it? And I'm like, I don't, not only do I not even think or not think, I don't care. But the point is, is basketball, when there's somebody like that that transcends it, it's about an idea. It's about, it's not even him, which is, it is him because, you know, he's a real person. I don't want to take that away from him. You know, you, you, you make these people out to be bigger than they really are. And, and you think about how they don't have, you know, you, you don't think of them as like real people. But he was a very real person. But like, it becomes about, it becomes an idea, you know? Like Kobe Bryant was an idea and he was helping women's basketball. He, you know, the way he was with his daughter and she wanted to be in the fucking WNBA. And that's just beautiful. I mean, there's this clip on, I think it's Jimmy Kimmel talking about how um, uh, Kobe was just like, you know, 
he was talking about his daughter and they were saying about how like, oh yeah, don't you feel bad that you don't have any sons? You know, you need someone to carry on your legacy. And his daughter would cut him off and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa that's me. I'm the legacy. And then how he was like, yeah, you're right. You are the legacy. And that's just so awesome that he had his daughter's fucking back like that. You know, I mean, look, it's hard enough for fucking women in, in certain ways. And just the fact that he was like an al- an ally for his daughters and like, it was just fucking so awesome. And it's, it's, it's like people need that. And now that he died in such a weird fucking way, it's about the idea. It's about the idea that died too. And, but, the, but, but here's the thing. The idea didn't die because you still have that idea. You know, it's it's it still lives on. He's bigger than the person he was, which is fuck, man. I mean, you know, it's more than ninety nine point nine percent of people can say. And that's a beautiful fucking thing. And it's so tragic the way he died. And it's so tragic the way his you know, how how it how it happened. But I mean, no, but it's tragic. However, there is also the idea that lives on and that is is just it's so special man you know i don't get too serious on this podcast too much because we like to have a silly goose time and you know that's my idea that i want to fucking get out there uh but when there's a you know and that's bullshit but there's a real idea behind kobe kobe bryant and it, and it's just you know it's really touching man for a guy like me for a guy like for a guy like me who doesn't even fucking watch basketball. You know, there were kids out, uh, there was nine-year-olds out there that were that were like mourning the, the loss of Kobe Bryant and, and 50-year-olds out there that were at the Staples Center that was, were like, you know, and, and, and you know, it's, it's always a shame when somebody like that dies because they're not able to witness the love for them and, and, the, and the togetherness that it, 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 you know, it brings us all together afterwards and they're not able to see it like even my buddy brody stevens who who was a victim of suicide like he who who, you know he killed himself and like to see that guy was always insecure about people liking him he thought people didn't like him he thought you know and he was one of the funniest guys i've fucking ever met in my life and i would see him all the time at the comedy store and he was a friend of mine and he killed himself and 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 just the rallying that the the people the community that the comedians and then the people outside of, of people who are comedians, just fans that just got behind the idea of Brody Stevens. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a sad, but beautiful thing. And it's also a shame that that person can never see it because he would have loved to see it. And, you know, I I don't know. It just makes me think, you know, people say like, grab your loved ones and, and let them know you love them. And, and I suppose that's very important. Uh, but my heart goes out, man. And that sucks. And it's just a tragedy. And hopefully in a few weeks or months or however a year, however long it takes you to grieve, like you can just start celebrating the idea that Kobe Bryant was. And um, and that's that, you know. I mean, I think about Tupac all the time. I know I make jokes about how fucking, you know, I got I got this shit on a loop no here. So I fucked your bitch. Fat. You know, and that's not really the idea that Tupac was behind fucking someone's bitch, but it was the you know to me Tupac fucking it transcended hip hop. It transcended uh, his rap music. Like I fucking he got me through fucking certain times in you know as silly as it is a suburban white kid, but like high school and college and shit like that. And now whenever some shit goes down in the back of my head a little bit, I ain't got no motherfucker. So I fuck your bitch, you fat mother- And it helps, but uh, you know, love or whatever out there to all the all the people that are affected by this. God, I can't believe how many people. I've never witnessed something, even the Michael Jackson thing. I know it was. I know Michael Jackson was probably bigger than Kobe, but I've never seen something like like this on, for 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 a celebrity that died. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the 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 real shit. And now we'll try to have a silly goose time. I mean, I'm not. I don't ever promise you anything. It is what it is, and we fly by the seat of our pants, my babies, and it's all good. But uh it's cool it's also cool to me that someone can like like lebron's like this like that someone can fucking be so in the spotlight i mean and and under a microscope and just 
I mean, LeBron just take LeBron. Like, dude, where's his scandal? How is LeBron just basically, you know, Jesus? Like, I don't want to fucking get the Catholics mad, even though who cares? But like, even though who fucking cares, right? Because it doesn't matter, right? I don't want to piss off the Catholics, but on one hand, I don't want to piss off the Catholics, but on the other hand, who cares, right? Couldn't care a rat's ass, you know what I'm talking about? So why is LeBron so perfect? How come nobody's like, yeah, LeBron fucking got mad and choked me? Like, bro, who was that one? Chris Webber? Was that the guy? Who was the guy that choked the dude? That guy wasn't even fucking LeBron, and he was like, I'm going to choke someone. How the fuck do you get everything? LeBron, the guy has got the greatest family, (laughs) great, you know, he's got planes and houses. He listens to music on Instagram and makes this face. That's his scandal. That's it. Him turning it up on Instagram. That guy, is there a DM out there that can expose him? You know? The guy's fucking unreal and just... But my point is... How does he, like, if someone fucked with LeBron, I feel like LeBron would be like, nah, that's not worth my time. I'm bigger than that. I want to be the bigger person. Bro, how do you have everything and also be the bigger person? If I had everything, I'm going to be a small person. If I had fucking more than two pools, I'm getting smaller. Dude, I swear to God, if I get fucking un uh, like if I if you ever see me if I ever get a plane if I ever get a plane I get for real someone's gonna have to throw me in because I'm gonna be this big I swear to God ladder they'll be like hey without the ladder down. ladder down dude are you kidding me pilot pick me up just chuck me in there I'm small person now anytime some shit goes down I'm petty anytime some shit goes down somebody could be like you know uh, dude I'm petty now bro. I have to force myself to not clap back at these trolls in fucking Twitter, dude. I have to force myself not to. And when someone talks shit to me on Twitter, I have to force myself to turn this shit down that pops in my head. When somebody is in my Twitter, let's take a new old. I swear to God, if I get a plane, I'm the spook. Straight up. I'm going to be so small. People are going to be like, where is he? (laughs) <laughs> and I'm going to be in the room. <laughs> Swear to God, I'll be in a cupboard somewhere. Just like, let me out, bitch. I'm Chucky. Swear to God. When I get a plane, I'm Chucky. I'm getting overalls and a striped shirt. And just stabbing motherfuckers that talk shit to me on, on Twitter. I, like, how? How? How does it happen? Look at these motherfuckers that lose their minds. Look at Jared Leto. Hey, Jared Leto, we get it. You have 19 abs. Dude, you got abs touching your cock. We get it. They go all the way down. We get it, Jared Leto. You got abs that go from your Adam's apple all the way down to the base of your taint. Also, a petty. Because... You got a plane. When you get a plane, how do you not lose your mind? LeBron, he's like, nah, nah, it's all good. I'm an idea. That's amazing, dude. I swear to God. I I just don't understand how you can do that. I mean, I know people that are coming up now that are fucked in the head, and they're not even barely famous. They got tickets to sell. They got tickets left to sell, and they're like, I was with a buddy, and I'm not even going to name him because he's a buddy, but he snapped at another fucking, at a fan, dude, and I was like, whoa, whoa, bro. What about becoming an idea? You don't even have a house yet. And this guy's like, some fan came up, hey, when are you going to be on Rogan again? And the guy goes, the guy says, I don't fucking know. What? What about LeBron, dude? You don't even have a pool that you don't share with someone. 
you got a pool that you fucking share with some families because you're in a complex. And it's fine, but don't snap. What about being LeBron? I know some of these fucking guys coming up, dude, and they're just petty, dude. And I, you know, I try to keep a check on that, man. But, like, I'm not even talking about petty. I'm talking about, like, dicks. I know some comedians, man, and they're just jealous, bro. And it's like, why? We're all in this together. The second a person gets bigger that's in stand-up, the second they get bigger, it's better for me. Why don't you realize that? The more it's better for all of us, the more it's better for all of us. If you go on a tour with somebody, you know, uh, if I was going to go on a tour with fucking Bobby Lee or whatever the fuck, and we were just, nah, you know what? I don't want to work with that guy because this happened and that happened. I do. Bobby's like, I don't want to work with that guy because his fucking lips are always wet and he looks like a bird. And I say to Bobby, I don't want to fucking work with Bobby anymore because he's literally a cartoon and he's 50 even though he's 12. And now we talk shit and then we don't go on tour together. Guess what? We lose out on each other's fucking fans. And it's not as good for each other. I mean, I got one buddy that's just trying to, that just thinks everyone's out to get him, dude. I'm not going to tell you if he's an actor or a comedian, but he thinks that everybody is out to get him, dude. And he's fucking it up for himself. And I want to talk to the dude, but he's so hard to talk to. And I know that if we talk to it, if we talk to each other, he's going to get defensive. And he's fucking it up for himself, dude, because he's about to have it all. And I just want to be like, what about planes, dude? And quite frankly, that's the T. Quite frankly, that's the T. And I don't say that kind of shit because you pretty much have to be like either a woman or gay to say that's the T. But I'll fucking say it as a heterosexual male. That's the T. <laughs> So, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just, how are you not rooting for people? How are you not rooting for people? How are you not out there rooting for people? How do you let this shit, and I'm petty, but I'm petty to a point. If somebody talks shit, I talk shit. I told you, fucking. And I'm very interested in. But, dude, that's where it stops. How are you not? Rooting for people, man. They're people that when they do well, if everyone's doing well, everyone's doing well. How is that something so hard to understand? Especially in the same business, dude. People are so jealous, man. And, you know, I guess I get that way sometimes, but I, I, I try to fucking think about it. And I came from a good family, so, like, I had a leg up, you know. My parents taught, taught me well. And not everybody has taught has had good parents and not everybody has had a life of privilege. Okay. But still dude, there's people out there that were straight up fucked by their uncle that run businesses and are good ideas, you know? So at the end of the day, um, a rising tide lifts all boats. And I don't know really what that means, but one fire wrote it and it's true. And I do know what it means. A rising tide lifts all boats. That's the truth. A rising tide one fired fucking that's the one thing he typed on the thing today for some reason. He thinks he's goddamn Confucius and it's fine, dude. But it's true. A rising tide lifts all boats, dude. So get in the boat. Here comes the tide. I'm just a hot tea, bitch. <laughs> Breaking news. Do, 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 do. Breaking news. Manscaped. Breaking news. This important PSA is brought to you by Manscaped.com. This is your Pu oh, wow, dude. This is your pubic service announcement. Ah, ah, ah. This is the shit I'm reading. The Manscaped Engineering Team. This is your pubic service announcement, dude. Wow. The Manscaped Engineering Team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. Oh, 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 oh. The third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to 
Manscapes advanced skin safe technology, ology, ology, ology. I've been talking about Manscaped for a while now, and you know what? Manscaped products made personal grooming something I actually care about, all right? If you use the Lawnmower 2.0, it's an easy transition because it's the same replacement blade with a new and improved skin safe technology. And I tell you, this is premium, okay? And I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes. So you can take a longer shave. You got big balls? No prob, okay? The circumference of your balls, the, if it's like a melon, no prob. 90 minutes for one battery. Uh, they've upgraded to 7,000 RPM motor with, a qu- with quiet stroke technology. Uh, <laughs> did it say stroke? Uh, if you're listening to me speak right now, you're one of the first people to hear about this life-changing product. And I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Uh, trim that junk of yours. Get 20% off free shipping. Uh, get 20% off plus free shipping with code congrats at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code congrats at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code congrats. Honeybook, you've done it. Your creative passion is now your full time job. Congratulations. But maybe you wish someone would have told you how much time drafting proposals, creating contracts, and chasing down payments would take. The good news is that HoneyBook can help with all those tedious admin tasks so you can get back to doing what you love. That's the goal, right? You don't have to do the tedious stuff. So HoneyBook is an online business management tool that organizes your client communications, bookings, contracts, and invoices all in one place. It's perfect for freelancers, entrepreneurs, or small business owners that want to consolidate services they already use, like QuickBooks, Google Suite, Excel, and MailChimp. They also have e-signatures and built-in automation to save your time and get you paid faster. And right now, HoneyBook is offering our listeners 50% off when you visit tryhoneybook.com slash congrats. Payment is flexible, and this promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. T R Y H O N E Y B O O K dot com slash congrats. Go to tryhoneybook.com slash congrats for fifty percent off your first year. That's tryhoneybook.com slash congrats. Man, do you did you guys see the um the li- this is so this is as ridiculous as uh uh this is like peak 2020. I kind of hate when people say that, but this is the fucking truth. Newscaster. Bring up when the newscaster said the L.A. Nakers. Remember when she said that? Uh, did you guys see this? I mean, it went viral the other day. <clears throat> but the lady basically was uh, talking about Kobe Bryant. Or wait, was she talking about Kobe Bryant? Yeah, she was. And it was the L.A. Lakers, and she was going to say Knicks, and she said L.A. Nakers, and it did not sound like Nakers. And also Nakers even sounds bad. So she said it, and um, and it was so, and it was so like, what the fuck? Because she said it quick. And there were people that actually thought that it was an outrage that she said the N-word. Which is absolutely fucking insane to me. Like, imagine being so racist and insane, but also you were able to climb the ladder at, as a newscaster to get to the point where you're like, no matter what, here it goes. This is the moment I've been waiting for. When one of the most beloved athletes of all time dies prematurely, I've got it. I've got my chance on the worldwide stage to slip in the N-word and let everybody know. Like, there are people that actually think she said that and she's racist, which is so fucking insane. She obviously made a fucking goof, but people are going to want, people are trying to cancel this lady. The fact that this lady even has to apologize for not, for saying Nakers is ludicrous, but here it is, and it does sound bad. A star that was perfectly cast on the Los Angeles Nakers, Los Angeles uh, Lakers. Kavita, if I can ask you to stay with us. Play again. 
a star that was perfectly cast on the Los Angeles Lakers Los Angeles Lakers could be there if I could ask you to really does with sound us, like it actually that was, was perfectly cast on the Los Angeles Lakers I mean Los stopped Angeles, and said it dude took a break and said the n word took a break took took a breath and was just like let her rip my babies I'm racist and I can't help it anymore <laughs> you know what fuck it here we go I know I know it's taboo, but got to say it. Also, the worst time, you know? It couldn't have been a worse time. Literally, literally couldn't have been a worse time. One of the most famous, beloved black people of all time died, and she couldn't have said it at a worse time. Died fresh one hour before that, and she had to slip in the N-word. Hilarious. Anyway, she obviously didn't fucking do that, so lay off her case. It was a mistake. She meant to say fucking... Nicks, I think she said, which is crazy as it is, because Nicks have nothing to do with it. But that's what her explain, explanation was. I guess she kind of does kind of owe an explanation because it really does sound like the N-word. Still. Eh. Um, it'd be great if she just said fucking the, uh, like a, a gay slur, like the, the one that began with F. And she was like, I'm so sorry. I meant to say fire hydrant and maggots. People are like, what? What? Like really, I just hate gays, but um, that's what she said. I, I just hate gays. I couldn't help it. Couldn't help it. Um, I, I, I just think it's... How about fucking Ari Shafir, dude? This guy is a troll. It's the weirdest thing about Ari, man. Let me play this. Or you want to bring it up? It's the weirdest thing about Ari. It's like, I know Ari... And he's always been the fucking nicest guy to me. Like, just all I like, I don't judge people. I, I try not to judge people unless, like, until I've met them. And the guy's, like, legitimately one of the nicest guys. Like, he's so nice. Every now and then he texts me. I haven't talked to him in maybe over a year. But, like, every now and then he texts me. And he's also done noble shit. Like, he, he texted me once that comics weren't getting paid enough. And he was like, hey, I'm trying to sign this petition for comics to get paid. And I was like, oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> and then he fucking dosed Bert Kreischer with his family and, and did this shit. And it's just so – just, I understand he's a troll. But he wrote, Kobe Bryant died 20 years too late today. He got away with rape because all Hollywood liberals who attack comedy enjoy rooting for the Lakers. But play the fucking um, the video that uh, Rappaport tweeted it, if you look on his. Um, and it's also probably all over YouTube. But, um, but uh, yeah, like he just did this thing. And here's the thing. Here's the weird thing about... Um, let me let me actually play it and then uh and then I'll I'll get to it. I mean all day Rappaport's been fucking he's such a sports fan. I mean couldn't be posting more Kobe shit. I love Michael Rappaport. He's such a fucking nice dude. Uh but no, it's not on his in, on Instagram. He took it down. No. So I get pissed, right? Cuz one fire's taking too long and I could have found it already, but I get pissed. So he linked it up to put it on his computer and play the audio on his computer, but now I get pissed off because the first thing you do when you type in A, literally comes up Ari Shafir Kobe video and he just went too far and put Ari Shafir and then clicked on only only Ari Shafir and that's when I get pissed off. Now it's fine because I'm trying to be an idea and I don't want to be petty. But here it is. Play it. Now pain in the world and it's always a bunch of terrible stories. And every once in a while there's a good story. A good story comes out. The guy who got away with rape got his today. Kobe Bryant is a god. I'm here in Charlotte, the home of the team that originally drafted him. Uh, maybe he wouldn't have raped that chicken Denver if he had been if he had stayed in Charlotte with the Hornets. But anyway, the... is that it? Um, it's so weird that he did that. I know he's a troll, and here's the other thing too. People are like, you know. It's com. Some people who are defending him are like, it's comedy, it's comedy, which, yeah, and then people are like, well, where's the joke? Uh, and I think, look, Ari is playing a character that, and, and he obviously gets off on trolling people. Like, it's what he wants, and okay. Uh, and it's insane to me. Like, it's fucking utterly insane that he wants people to fucking hate him. Like, he's a heel, I get it, okay. If this was the WWF, he would be fucking Hollywood Hogan or whatever. But, bro, people are not going to know you're joking. 
And also, there's not really a joke in there. He's just kind of like trying to get people, egg people on. And also, here's the other thing, dude. You're going to get your ass kicked. Like, you're a comedian. People always know where you are. This, when the, uh, my jaw dropped when he did this. And I guess the whole idea is he wants people to talk about it and shit like that, but fuck, man. I mean, it's bad to do that. It's just, I don't know, man. And uh, the other thing, too, is like he, he's like Joe, Joe, like a lot of people know who he is from Joe Rogan. And so people are tagging Joe Rogan, come get your boy. Like, you got to think about like that, dude. Like, oh, God. I, I don't understand when people like want to be so, I don't understand. I, I don't even know. I don't even get it. Like, I just don't get how, isn't the idea as a comedian to put butts in seats? Like, people are just going to boycott you. I guess he's trying to find the fucking real dregs of the earth that are just like, yeah, fuck it, yeah. That's a weird fan base, though, man. I mean, people, even comedians are so mad, because that's the thing. uh, It's kind of bad for comedy to do shit like that because people are like oh well he's gonna here we go hiding behind shit like it's a joke and you're gonna just say it's a joke right and comedians just can say anything without repercussions and it's like yeah well we're supposed to be able to but also make it funnier than that dude make it a little bit i don't know wink or something so you don't get killed it's a it's a weird thing for me to see dude because like i said ari's always been super nice to me and to see him just do that is just so fucking weird what a lunatic what a lunatic dude I always think it's weird. This is not, you know, I don't know if Ari does this or not. I'm talking about something else now. But, like, I always think it's weird that when, like, somebody dies or whatever the fuck, something happens, kid gets molested and it gets exposed. Like, comedians just race to Twitter and, like, are like, ah, let me come up with the best joke so it'll pop off. And it's just like, dude, give it time, man. Or, like, what about the families, I guess, you know? I honestly felt weird posting. At, I haven't posted since Kobe died because I felt weird Because I don't really post about serious shit. You know, I've kind of made it a point to not post about serious shit because I don't, you know, it's comedy. I want to do comedy mostly, 95% of the time. Um, I'd probably do it more than 95% of the time. But so serious posts always kind of make me feel weird to do as a comedian. And I'm not saying I never do it or or you should never do it if you are a comedian. But um. Fuck, I totally lost my train of thought. But yeah, I just I just feel like it's weird to even post about anything besides Kobe right now because everybody knows about it. And it would just be weird to be like, here's a funny video I made. Uh, I guess out of respect? I don't know. Morning? I don't know. Uh, not sure, really. I don't know what to say about that Ari thing, man. That was fucking l- crazy. Um, and here's the other thing, too. Like, people are like, I want to fuck them up. I want to fucking beat the shit out of them. That's not the answer either. I mean, I know there's a, a bit that uh, I don't want to ruin the bit, but what's his name? Chris DiStefano made, was doing this funny bit about how uh, very generally, like, people... People, I love Chris DiStefano, man. Love this dude. And it was he was talking about how uh, uh, people need to get people on Twitter say anything because they're behind a keyboard and they need to get punched in the mouth, though. Like you need to get punched in the mouth. People like that need to get punched in the mouth, and that's the reason why they're behind their keyboards because they need to get punched in the mouth. Whatever. It's fucking f- hilarious. Obviously, what I said wasn't just funny because it's not my bit, and I just fucking was explaining it, but. Um, and I don't want to say the funny part because it's his material. You should go see him. But, um, he, uh, you know, 
punched in the mouth is one thing, but like people are like tweeting addresses. They're tweeting like that shit is fucking crazy, bro. These people need to get get checked. Punched in the mouth is one thing, but dude, don't incite a fucking mob. That is insane. To be like, all right, well, this is your address. This is the person's address. This is everyone's address. Go ahead. Like that's, I don't know. I don't, th- I don't think that's the answer, man. I don't think that's the answer. I know some people have done some bad shit, but you got to let the fucking whatever it is, the authorities or the people that or the powers that be. I don't know, man. Uh, All right. I got to do these fucking ads here. Here we go. Captera. If you work for a small business or have a side gig, which is so many people out there, uh, you probably need to find software. Okay, but you also have other things to do. All right. Like maybe you got a family or your hobbies or whatever, like work can be hard. You've got things you'd rather be doing. Well, you can cut to the chase job-wise with Captera. This is the website that millions of people use monthly to find software for their teams or business so you can have more time to do the things you want to do. They simplify the software search into a few few steps. It starts with using their free resources and guides to pinpoint the problem and identify the software features you need. Then you can filter options to find the right software for your industry. They have over 700 specific categories of software. I was just on their website and I looked, I just typed in church. And you can, they have like so many software, software uh, programs that they narrow out that they can be like, all right, this is what you use. If you want to, if you need apps for church or help for, for, uh, you know, your website or whatever the, whatever the hell it is, it's, it's amazing. And then you can compare them and be like, okay, well, this is the one I need. I mean, it just, it, it saves you so much time. It was actually quite impressive. Um, you can compare them side by side, save your side by side, save yours to the uh, favorites to a short list. With free in depth software, guides, and tools, plus over 1 million reviews from real users, Captera will give you access to anything you need to know before you buy. So you can spend less time trying to find software and more time doing what you love and cutting your work time drastically. Visit captera.com slash congrats for free today to find the software tools you need for your business. captera.com slash congrats. captera, that's C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash congrats. C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A. captera, software selection simplified. Congratulations is brought to you by Cash App, the official app of the Log Cabin. Um, Yeah. So anyway, dude, I got to say, man, you babies are amazing. The listeners and all that stuff, because uh, because uh, I want to show you guys. Um, here we go. If you go to the app, uh, the the uh, what do you call it? The podcast app on Apple, and you go to reviews. Congratulations! Somebody alerted me this alerted me to this on um, Twitter. Um, by the way, I stopped checking Twitter a lot because that's my New Year's resolution. So I don't let you fucking heathens get to me too much because I fucking try not to, you know, too much. But, you know, why does it say in congratulations with Chris D'Elia, hosts are fucking me and Dave Batista? That's weird, man. Dave Batista's never been on this show and also doesn't host the show. But I will tell you one thing. Don't fix it. Leave it. Um, who the fuck put that there? What if Dave Batista did it? He's like, well, I just really like it, and I want to be considered part of it. How about this? How many reviews? 20,074 reviews and ratings. We have a 5.5 out of 5. My babies. You killed it. That's so awesome and means so much to me that you guys help. Loving it. Loving it, loving it, loving it. It's crazy how many reviews we have. Go out there and review more. Let's try to get it to 21,000 for, for next week. Let's see what Dateline has. Sometimes I fall asleep to Dateline, and it, sometimes I try to fall asleep to Dateline because of, like, Lester Holt's voice or Keith Morrison or the guy that sounds like this. I don't know who that is. You know what I mean? Laura was a, Laura was a beautiful young girl that had a family, and it was everything to her. And she loved cars, but she got ran over by one of her cars. Did she do it herself? 
Or was it her jealous boyfriend? Who is that guy? That's Josh. Is that Josh Mekowitz? No. No, that's not Josh Mekowitz. Is it Dennis Murphy? It's got to be Dennis Murphy. Dennis Murphy, nobody looks like they get food on their fucking shirt more than Dennis Murphy. He looks like he has fucking, he, he would eat like even shit that you don't get places. Here, play it, play it. It's got to be him. Hey guys, it's Dennis Murphy from the Dayline Show. Him, I just right? wanted to tell you, we're finishing up some stories here in Southern Illinois, and we were just Couldn't taking look like he gets great food care of by the people of the resort more. at Egyptian Hills. Want to give him a shout out. You guys are lucky to be living in such a pretty part of the country. God, I want to know that guy. Go, go to one of his uh, things, though, where he's like, in a small remote area, on a lake. He's, it always sounds like he's figuring out what he's saying as he's like, on a lake, with a boat. Sam, I am. Boy, I like... Imagine you had him as a fucking dad, and he's, he read Green Eggs and Ham to you. Bro, you'd just be, hey, will you read Green Eggs and Ham? And he'd be like, Green Eggs and Ham. And you'd be like... <laughs> But he'd be into it. He'd keep reading because he'd love it. I'm on a boat. I'm on a moat. I'm on my throat. Eh? Se? Ryan Winmer breaks his Not this. From Fucking London. fuck, man. One Listen. fire till no, the day. No agreements, no holes barred, no lawyers present, no money exchanged hands. Ryan wanted to tell a story, and he wanted to tell a Dateline. So, so I know there are a lot of people in the greater Cincinnati so area so. when so. they hear the name Ryan Widmer or the bathtub case, they start to gag. But I think this really is must-see viewing for people that have followed this for so long. He tells a story, and, and Karen, I think sometimes... A, I got uh, it, bro. T- Turn it off. I can't do it. I got it right here, dude. It's going to be a commercial, and I'm going to be pissed. Can't wait for this to be a commercial. Here we go. When the phone rang, she thought it was the usual evening phone call from her son, homesick college student, about a six-hour drive away. But it wasn't. It was the police saying that he was missing. A few days later, they found his frozen body out in the woods. Making it up, making it up, and then so good at his job, he'll be like, I got it, I got it, and then he does it and making it up, and but gets it right still. (laughs) Makes it up. Her frozen body was in the woods, and Prince was like, how the fuck did he read the thing? They're like, no. And he's like, I've been around long enough. I know how I know how people die. All you have to do is tell me their name. It was David Seltzer. Oh, he froze in a lake. He froze in his boat. And his wife did it. The greatest cop of all time. Just because he's a voiceover of fucking. Um Yeah, so so I go to try to sleep to Dateline, but then it gets so interesting. Like I was listening to this one called The Intruder. And, dude, Dateline, it's so good how it makes it seem like you're like, oh, well, fucking dude, his family died? Fuck, man, this guy had it rough. What? He's crying, and the phone call's like, I don't know what to do. And then fucking 20 minutes in, you're like, oh, he did it. How did they make me on his side and then just switch me over and realize that he did it? He completely did it. Um. Anyway, I got to get a fucking turtleneck. That's the thing. You guys better believe I'm getting a turtleneck. I'm not fucking around, too. I'm getting a turtleneck. I got to get one before fucking it gets warm because I got to wear this turtleneck because, dude, I'm going to look so goddamn sexy in a turtleneck. It's unreal. Dude, I swear to God. You know what? As a matter of fact, yay, this week I'm getting a turtleneck, dude. This week I'm getting a turtleneck, and all you motherfucking haters that think I won't can go kiss my fucking ass, dude. I'm getting a turtleneck, and it's going to come up to my fucking jaw, and, bro, it's going to make my fucking mandibular pop out so hard i swear to god you know what i'm gonna do i'm getting a turtleneck but i also guess i gotta get towels because there's gonna be chicks around and i don't want their pussies fucking sweating the holes so much that they slip and fall and break their ankles because then i got a lawsuit dude i'm gonna get a turtleneck and then i'm gonna get a bag of fucking big towels and just pass them out when i see chicks and she'll be like why oh i get it why are you and then see me about my fucking shit popping? Because also I trim my beard to make it look like, bro, bro when I do a four or a five on the trimmer and my, my jawline, it's like people are like, yo, did someone draw that? So I got now a turtleneck with a four or five trim and I'm going to be walking around town like it's legal. Dude, I've got a bag. I'm going to get two bags. I'm going to get a backpack and two fucking big Ikea bags of 
of towels. And whenever I see a chick, especially in a skirt, I got to pass out a towel because I don't want her to break her ankles. I don't want to do, I don't want to fucking, I don't want her to slam her tailbone on the fucking conk. I don't want that. Excuse me, ma'am. Sorry, but I've got a turtleneck on. If I wear a turtleneck, they'll let me in anywhere. Just so you know. Just so you know. They'll let me in anywhere, dude. That's how fucking sexy I'll look. Oh, shit. And then this. Oops. Oopsie daisy. Can you hear it on the audio? Oopsie daisy. The heavy sneak chain comes out. Halfway through the night, I got to go get more towels. You understand me, dude? I swear to God, man. Put a turtleneck on my body. See what happens. Put a turtleneck on my fucking torso and see what happens. Dude, me putting it on like this and then fucking folding it over. That's me pulling, pull, folding. Whoops. Me folding it over like that. Putting it on and then me putting put it on like this. Putting it on like this. And me folding it over is when the guitar kicks. Me taking the shit because it's not mocked and just. And then all of a sudden passing out towels, dude. Here you go. Here you go. And then chicks, whoa. And her, because I can't, it's, it's a shame too. Because I can't get, get towels out fast enough. Because when I'm in crowded places, girls are like, what the fuck? And they fall. And they fall casual. They, they become, you know, they, they become casualties to my fucking turtleneck game. Casualties to a turtleneck game. That's what they become. And it's sad too, man. But hopefully they were an idea. It's sad as fuck. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I tried to get over here as quickly as I could to get you a towel. I know because I've got a turtleneck on. It was really fucking irresponsible and dangerous of me. But I, <laughs> and I also have a fucking four or five on my trimmed beard. But it's really fucking sad. Here's an extra towel. Before you get up, put it down. I don't want you slipping and falling because your pussy gets so wet because I've got a fucking turtleneck on. And then run, hustle away with my fucking Ikea bags. <laughs> Just making this noise, like, <clears throat> running away with my two big Ikea bags and a fucking turtleneck on with a heavy chain out just slapping against my chest, dude. God, how sexy can you goddamn be? I also got a, ba- a fucking, I also got a backwards hat. I don't call it a hat. I call it a backwards hat. I got a backwards hat. I got a fucking hat in Florida once and I wore it and it was so sexy and everyone was like, God damn, you're so fucking, what's going on? You do things to me in this hat. I had to get some fucking towels, and then I left the hat on the plane, and then a few months went by. I mourned the hat, and then I fucking was in Irvine today, and I got an L.A. hat. So I'm, I'm about to start. F- Man, it's too bad a turtleneck with a fucking uh, hat doesn't look good because it doesn't. Because if it did, they would call me population control. That's legit what they would call me because people would be slipping and falling and breaking their goddamn necks. Anyway, dude, I don't mean to brag, but I'm fucking extremely sexy in a turtleneck and a heavy chain peeking out. And then also just with fucking, I would have cool pants on too. He has a turtleneck and also a heavy sneak chain that sometimes he takes out halfway through the night. But also, he's got two heavy Ikea bags with dozens of towels in them, just in case women get so wet while looking at him, noticing his his five, his five number five razor-shaped sh- beard, and, and get so wet. And then the wet goes down their legs if they're wearing a skirt, and then they slip and hurt their tailbone. That's when Dalia would come up and hand them a towel out of his Ikea bag and hope for the best as he ran away, giving out towels to women that saw him. Wow. Well, we started with some real poignant shit on this podcast and then turned into some absolute ridiculous. But I told you it's a silly goose time, dude. It's a fucking silly goose time, dude. It's a fucking silly goose time, man. And life fucking rips, man. Just remember, even when celebrities die and ideas fucking fade, life rips. You got to remember that shit, dude. Life continues to rip and it continues to rip and it continues to rip and it continues to rip, dude. I'm a preacher. So go get your Life Rips merch. And, you know, I'm trying to make a dollar, dude. And it does it. Whatever, bro. It does, it, I don't, or don't get one, man. It's an idea. Um, My buddy knows my schedule. You at Coffee Bean? I have that shirt in my car, and I'm headed there. And then he writes me one, at 149, and then at 152. Whoa, holy shit. It's closed forever. That's crazy. 
And then he writes, I think maybe you're recording, so see ya. He knows it. He knows my business. That's awesome, dude. This is the one, dude. One Fire just sent me this one. This fucking turtleneck. Dude, you know what I need to do? Wow, that's a good one. St. Laurent cable roll neck knit. Oh, it's only three sixty five. Oh, wow, it's sold out. Great. Can't get it. Yes. Dude, I saw a fucking turtleneck the other day at a place, and it was so popping, and it was $3,000, and I was like, are you kidding me? Sure, bags, but you kidding me? I was like, sure, of course, bank account exploding, but you kidding me? I was like, sure, got to open the windows to my house so the cash can breathe, but you kidding me? I was like, sure, I've got stacks, and if I lay down, looks like I've got three cocks in my pants, but still, hey, you kidding me? Come on, dude. It was 3K, and I'm like, pass, but also, guess what? Wish I got it, because no deadly unts. <laughs> no fucking deadly unts, dude. I'm getting a black turtleneck, and y'all could go fuck yourself, for real. And put that on my tombstone. When I die, for real, and I know someone's going to Photoshop this shit, whatever, dude. But when I die, put this on my tombstone. I'm getting a black turtleneck, and y'all can go fuck yourself. For real. I'm serious. Oh, dude, I can't wait to get a... I'll wear shorts with it, you bitch. Um, yeah, so... I'm going to get a fucking, look at these fucking turtlenecks, bro. You know what I need to do? I need to be one of those fucking hookers on Instagram and be like, here's my, here's my gift list and just have one thing on it, a fucking dope 3K turtleneck and some rich fucking either old housewife lady or some old fan is going to get me one, dude, and then send it to my P.O. box and I'll rock that shit, dude. I need to get one of those hooker things. When models have that fucking thing, here's my gift list, my lift, my gift list. You're a fucking straight up hooker, dude. Just blow dicks. How about that? Hey, look at what's on it. A bag. Oh, yeah. Why do, why do girls love to keep things in things? Mr. Porter, they got fucking turtlenecks. Who's that? I don't know, but turtlenecks are amazing. The authorities seem to write off that death to youthful indiscretion. Making it up, but still getting it. Ooh, a brown turtleneck looks nice. Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren. I'm gonna make it more. Ralph Lauren, purple label. Pff, need it. Wow, I'm gonna be the only motherfucker in summer wearing a turtleneck. I don't like those puffy ones. God, you look like a bitch when you wear those puffy ones. The puffy necks. Wow, you look like a bitch. Like what is this? 1996 and your Lance Bass. Oh, wow. Look at this one. Logo. In... Oh, look at this one. Jesus Christ. We get Bill Cosby on a warm day. Um, can't wait to get a turn like you motherfuckers. You're not going to know what hit you. That's how you know. I'll, I'll know that chicks are feeling me with my turtleneck. But they'll be like, hey. <laughs> Pass out. A Dude, I'm going to bring little towels around for real. Like. I gotta start. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna straight up do that at the Laugh Factory one night, maybe Wednesday night. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, that's it. Twitter questions? Nah, fuck it. Should we wrap? Would you? Let's look at a Twitter question or two. Uh we should do fucking. We gotta do. You know what we're gonna do next time? Instagram most fucked up Instagram co- post of the week. We gotta start doing that again. That was fun, and people are dumb as shit about these Australian fires but still showing me these their titties and shit okay uh congrats po- uh, oh the deserve it scale look at this lady wow <laughs> dude look at this girl she's going like fucking 12 miles an hour in a target with on a, on a bike and she tried to take a hard turn she obviously hadn't ridden a bike in years LMFAO what's the de- deserve it scale wow deserve it scale I don't know at a 10 bro I mean, you're going 12 miles an hour on a fucking mountain bike in a... Oh, no, it's not even a mountain bike. It's a, it's a, one of those basket bikes. And just s- fucking crashing near the Tupperware, you know? With a jean jacket on. Don't ride a bike with a jean jacket on. Wow. Here we go. Oh, here we go. My brother and I have this argument all the time. Is it... Is it cuda to not do something that you like because other people say you shouldn't? For example, liking a shirt, certain show or reading comics or things like that. 
Good argument. Good argument. Um, I think people, I, I think it's more about the hive mind. Like people don't think for themselves. Being a CUDA distilled, that's a term, uh, if, you're, if you're new to the Congratulations podcast, you're a CUDA. It comes from being a barracuda. Barracudas just see shiny objects and gravitate towards them. You CUDA, right? Like Coachella is CUDA because maybe you don't even like the bands playing, but you're like, got to go because everyone else is going, right? So like a comic or like certain show, watching it, it just just watching it isn't CUDA. Like if you're at home and you're like, eh, let me see what this fucking um, uh, Watchmen is all about because people are talking about it. That's not CUDA. But if you don't get it and you're like, ah, I still got to watch it, and then somebody talks about how good it is and you don't think it's good and you're like, oh, no, yeah, it's great, it CUDA. But just doing it, you know, things become popular and, and they're popular for a reason. But, you know, it does, it's always a fine line, man. And we all have a little bit of cootie in us. And I always say this, you know, you have to have a little bit of cootie in us because if you don't, you're dead. You're not fucking, you're a cold body. Um, but yeah. So I can't really answer that question really hard. But yeah, no, it, no, the answer is no. It's not cootie just to do something that other people like because you have to learn what you like anyway. Um, anyway, that's good. That's good. That's it. We're done. This is over an hour. We're good. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, come to see me in Brea. I got two weekends there. It's going to sell out. It's a big club, but you got to get your tickets now. Uh, I'm going to be in Brea. That's going to be fun. I'm working out this new material. I got like 30 minutes of new material. By that time, I'll have more than that. I'm trying to eke out this Follow the Leader tour. You know how many cities I did on fucking uh, the Follow the Leader tour? As a matter of fact, here's the deal. Here's what I'm going to do right now. I, uh, I have I played a lot of cities. I the follow the leader tour. Follow the leader tour. It's drunk. But um, if you can guess how many cities I played and tweet it to me or DM it to me, whatever. I don't really see many DMs. But if you tweet it to me uh, and you get it right, I'll give you two free tickets to my show next time. Uh, the first person who gets it. I'm, I'm not going to forget. But if everyone gets it, I'm, I'm going to be, you know. Got to make these bags. But the first person that guesses how many cities I did on the Follow the Leader Tour, my agent just told me, the first person that gets it, uh, I'll give you two a free I'll give you two free tickets, and I will meet you when I come to your city. Uh, so that's the competition. Uh, so just guess, and that's how, and then and then that's cool, and then that's a competition that we'll do, uh, a giveaway or whatever the fuck. And text me. Actually, no. You know what? That's what we're gonna do. You're not gonna tweet it. You're going to text it to me. I'm going to check my texting, my community texts. And the first person to text me how many cities correctly, how many cities I did on the Follow the Leader tour, uh, I'm going to give you two free tickets and a meet and greet when I come to your city next time. My text, text me at 818-239-7087. That's 818-239-7087. Text me. The first person to text me the amount of cities that I played on the Follow the Leader Tour gets two free tickets and a meet and greet. Uh, and that's it. So, uh, yeah, we're Life Rips hoodies, I think they're all sold out fucking again. But I'll try to restock them when I can. You guys, I, I, I mean, you guys, we added the black ones now. They're, they're so dope. I didn't even know people would want the black ones, but now they're selling more, even more than the tie-dyed ones. You guys, love you guys. Remember Life Rips and uh, keeping it real. Keeping it real. Keep it real and uh, try to be positive, man. Let's be positive, you guys, I guess. Love you guys. Some of you. Some of you guys are probably pieces of shit. But uh, I'll see you soon. See you in West Palm Beach. See you in all the places. Freya.